This segment of Labatt Buffalo Main Event is brought to you by Kaz Electronics, your gadget source with referral rewards. And we're back on Labatt Buffalo Main Event along with Bob Gaughan. I'm Brad Ryder, joined this week by Sabres managing partner Larry Quinn. And Larry, about two months into the season, what do we know about the Buffalo Sabres at this point? Well, we can score a lot of goals some nights and other nights we struggle, but it's, um, you know, I, I think what you're seeing is a, is a very talented team that's, that's trying to find its identity a little bit and um, young team. And so I, I think actually it's, they're going the way I thought we would go with, with uh, some of the losses that we had and, um, you know, filling that vacuum. So I'm, 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 I'm really optimistic about it, and I, but I'm not at all satisfied with, with the results so far. On the West Coast trip, there were a couple of games where the toughness and the grit of this team were questioned. Do you and the hockey department feel that there is enough tough and gritness on this team? Yeah, I think, um, you know, they do play a different style out there. Anaheim definitely plays a different style. And I think that we weren't prepared to play it. It doesn't mean we can't, though. I mean, I, I think, um, you know, talking to Darcy after the game, he felt, you know, if we got used to this and played this style, we, we could play it pretty well. And, and you saw Saturday night that we adjusted pretty well. I think um, Thursday night's game wasn't indicative of anything. We just fell behind so quickly. And once you're down three, four goals uh, to play a team that's, that's just stacking you at the red line doesn't really tell you much about anything. But the game against Anaheim was, was a test that we didn't pass, but I, I thought we adjusted Saturday night. And, you know, I, I, think, we've got, I think we've got a lot of grit on this team. I, I think w w the difference with our team is we have a lot of grit with talent, and sometimes the uh, players want to play that individual talent style game which doesn't work and then we, we get we make the adjustment and play well. How high is the level of frustration within the organization that maybe the league is slipping back and, and not allowing a lot of what you guys have brought to the table the last couple of years to, to show forth, uh, to you know seep, seep through into the game and, and um, you know put your skill level on display when this team has been about speed? Well, I, I think, first of all, we have to be careful that when we talk about it, we're not per being perceived as whining. You know, I mean, I think there's a tendency around the league that people say, oh, you're complaining now because you didn't win your first 10 games and you're not in first place. Um, it's not about that. It's not even about our team. I think that we feel that that style of game works to build the sport. And we've had great success here in Buffalo. And we've got great support. So the issue isn't about Buffalo. It's really about the, the cities outside of Buffalo, the national television ratings. And we think that if the league designs a game where that kind of game can be played, you're going to have tremendous support throughout the country. So it's more about that than, than us being frustrated with our team, because which we're really not. We all agree on changes need to be right. made. Who is against it? Well, <laughs> what we've proposed at the league is that there are a lot of options that people think you can implement to change the game, whether it's bigger nets smaller goaltending equipment, eliminating the, the red line, maybe restricting the things the goalie can do with the puck. Uh, there's a whole series of things people would like to try. We've been advocates of take this year to really study them in a developmental uh, uh, situation. So whether you have a developmental team, whether you have the American Hockey League, whether you have maybe college or even junior hockey, study all these things so that when you want to tweak the game, you know what the re re desired result is. There are people against that approach, and I don't know why. I don't, I don't understand why somebody would be against basic research and intelligence. Uh, why would people be against changes in the game? Um, there's people that feel that we've changed it too much. Um, and there's, and there's, rightfully so, there's people who feel like you, you can't change without knowing the desired result. So I, I agree with those people. The problem with people that say they don't want change is they don't understand it's changing anyway. Um, equipment's changing the game, the size of players changing the game, the way goaltenders are playing, the way coaches are coaching, um, the, the advances in video, those all tend to change the game. And the issue for me is, is the National Hockey League and hockey going to be in control of its game and how it evolves or are you going to leave it to outside forces? When we don't do research and development and study what the game is, we're leaving it to somebody else. We're leaving it to Reebok. So re or Wayne Gretzky's developing a heated blade. So if that changes the game, we didn't change it. The equipment manufacturer did. And I think that's wrong. A change coming for the organization uh, was announced late last week with the severance, I guess, of the relationship between the Sabres and the Amherst moving forward into next year. What led to that and um, what, what comes next for Buffalo? Well, we, we, 
We think it's really important to have a, an affiliate that is the Buffalo Sabres affiliate because we think that that we, we know that, that our future is going to come from the drafting and development of players. And when you share that with another team, you really damage yourself in that process. And plus, uh, you're training other teams to players who you're competing with. And we don't like the fact that now three, three years of Florida Panthers players have come up through our coaching, our, our physical training, our systems, our video. That's not what we want to do. We made it clear to Rochester really two years ago that this was not an acceptable situation. We tried to do a single affiliation. We even offered to buy the team. Um, and what we found ourselves every year is we, we, they just kept deferring the decision till June every year. Then June would come around. We didn't have any choices left. So this year we said, listen, we're not going to put ourselves in that position. If we can't make a deal by November 1st, we're going to go elsewhere. We didn't make a deal, so we just, you know, it was one of those things where we set a deadline. We weren't going to sacrifice our developmental process one more year, and, and we moved on. Where are potential cities? I've heard Portland, Maine. I was thinking maybe perfect opportunity to go into maybe southern Ontario and expand yeah. the base there. What, what are the thoughts? We've got a few options. Um, you know, and Portland, Maine might be one of them, but I, I think the bottom line will be we will have a, a, a good, strong AHL affiliate where the Buffalo Sabres are the only NHL team participating in. And, you know, we'll probably, I'm not worried that we won't have that situation. The only thing that'll be different will be travel. So if, uh, obviously, Rochester was a great advantage from a travel point of view. I think there's great disadvantages to Rochester for not continuing with us. Um, our broadcast is the biggest promotional vehicle for the Rochester Amherst, and obviously that'll be gone after next year. So um, really sad to see the relationship end. I, I don't think it should have ended, but, you know, we had to look out for our future, so we're moving on. Larry, we appreciate you taking the time to join us. This is Labatt Buffalo Main Event, along with Bob Gone. I'm Brad Ryder. We'll be back in just a moment for our closing commentaries here on Labatt Buffalo Main Event. It's so normal to feel this overwhelming pressure to just have to do it all. We understand what that's like. Bristol Home and Bristol Village and any other residents that's out there will tell you, we see it every day, day in and day out. Families come in and usually it's at that point where they say, we just don't know what to do anymore. So think about it. Don't feel as though you're alone and ask for help. Early intervention is key. Planning ahead is key. Bristol Home and Bristol Village. Assisted living where family matters.